The earth itself appeared to me so small that it grieved me to think of our empire, with which we cover but a point, as it were, of its surface. Cicero, the dream of Scipio. Hello again. Let's continue analyzing Cervantes' masterpiece. The flight of Clavileño comes to an end when the Duke and Duchess light firecrackers in the horse's tail and belly. The explosion sends Don Quixote and Sancho flying through the air and crashing to the ground. Everyone in the Duke and Duchess's entourage pretends to be knocked unconscious, and Don Quixote and Sancho find a final message from Malambruno. Toward one end of the garden, they found a great javelin stuck in the ground and hanging from it and from two cords of green silk, a smooth white parchment. The text's great letters of gold state that Don Quixote succeeded in the adventure by merely attempting it, that the Countess Trifaldi and her retinue are released from their bearded curse, and that Antonomasia and Don Clavijo have returned to their pristine state. Malambruno is fully satisfied and content, a phrase used in commercial bills of exchange to recognize that proper payment has been received. Once again, Don Quixote's medieval fantasy embraces modern bourgeois terms. Finally, Malambruno's letter states that when Sancho completes his lashings, Dulcinea will be free. The white dove will be free of the great pestiferous falcons that pursue her and in the arms of her beloved and cooing suitor. Don Quixote declares the end of the adventure as follows. The adventure has been concluded without anyone being harmed by the bars, as can clearly be seen by what is written there on that standard. This is reflexive commentary. Cervantes conceived of his satirical text as something like croquet or billiards. In other words, a game by which difficult matters could be addressed without bringing harm to the participants. Did you know Toward the end of the 16th century, the Aragonese obsession with novels of chivalry coincided with a boom in the construction of palaces on country and states inspired by the chivalric aesthetic. We have already seen how in part two of the novel Cervantes reflects back on the controversial details of part one, especially Sancho's ass. Sancho's hesitations before riding on the back of Clavileño Together with this final crash to the ground, make the episode an echo of the strange kick to the face that the barber received when trying to mount the priest's mule in Sierra Morena in chapter 29 of part one. Notice that the barber's status as Mikomikon's squire, as well as his momentary loss of his beard, are repeated here in the squires and beards of this new adventure. Cervantes defies his critics saying, you were not careful readers before, so here, I give it to you again. At a more sophisticated level, the Clavileño episode is the final figurative prelude to Sancho's reign. It highlights the impossibility of attaining any godlike perspective that could make for perfect governance. Cervantes uses a narrative strategy in classical literature known as tecoscopia, meaning viewing from the walls, according to which Heroes ponder the political and military circumstances of their nations from on high. One of the origins of this strategy is Homer's Iliad, when Helen is summoned by King Priam to point out the Greek heroes on the plain below Troy. Another instance of tachyoscopia is Cicero's description of Scipio's walk with his great-grandfather as they ponder Carthage from a high place full of stars. Cicero's use of the trope is more overtly political and moral following the tradition of Plato, who used the view from above to emphasize the vanity and smallness of human concerns. Cervantes' mockery of absolute perspective is highlighted by Sancho's exchange with the Duke and Duchess at the end of chapter 41. Sancho claims that he peeked past his blindfold and gazed upon the earth. Next to my nose, I pulled away a bit of the handkerchief that was covering my eyes, and through there, I looked down at the earth, and it seemed to me that all of it was no bigger than a mustard seed, and the men that walked upon it only slightly larger than hazelnuts. Quixotic mission. 
to which classical narrative strategy does Cervantes repeatedly allude throughout the adventure of the wooden horse? A. Mis en abim. B. In medias res. C. Tecoscopia. Correct answer C. Tecoscopia. The Duchess immediately points out his error. It's clear that if the earth seemed to you like a mustard seed and each man like a hazelnut, then a single man would cover all the earth. Sancho dismisses her. Even so, I saw it from one side and I saw it all. Again, given that the earth is round, as per Copernicus and Magellan, the Duchess rightly notes that it is impossible to behold the earth in its entirety. From one side, one does not behold the entirety of what one is viewing. But Sancho pushes the limits of his lie, claiming that he saw the constellation Pleiades, known in Spanish as the seven nanny goats. He even claims he dismounted Clavileño and played with these goats about three quarters of an hour. These goats allow Cervantes to grant the adventure racial and political connotations. For example, echoing Eugenio's spotted she-goat in chapter 50 of part one, Sancho describes their multiple colors. They are two of them green, two red, two blue, and one mixed. Alluding to the alpha male, the Duke asks, did you see among all those nanny goats a great billy goat? But Sancho undercuts the Duke's interest in authority, replying that no billy goat has ever gone so far. No, my lord, but I have heard it said that none goes as far as the horned moon. Like the colors, all these allusions to horns and billy goats refer to sexual miscegenation. The episode ends ironically when Don Quixote indicates that he is wise to Sancho's fiction and hopes that Sancho will now accept his own version of what happened in the cave of Montesinos. Sancho, seeing as you want to be believed regarding what you saw in the heavens, I want for you to believe me regarding what I saw in the cave of Montesinos, and I'll leave it at that. It's an amazing moment. Are not all human relationships based on mutually respected lies? Oh, and one last point about these goats. Remember, Zoraida, near the end of part one of Don Quixote, in Arabic, her name actually means Pleiades. So, Sancho is symbolically frolicking with Zoraida as Don Quixote sits atop a Trojan horse. What does Cervantes mean by this? That's all for now. What do you think will happen next? Don't miss it. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.